Hi, here's a quick monitoring demo of OneUptime. OneUptime lets you monitor anything from websites, APIs, IP addresses, ports, or anything really. Uh, we are also adding features and functionality to monitor Docker containers, Kubernetes clusters, uh, servers and VMs, and a whole lot more. So anything you can think of really in your IT environment, like you know, you should be able to monitor in one of time. I'll quickly demo you how some of these features work. But you know, if you have any questions, feel free to request a demo on the website, and you know, our support team will will be happy to help. Uh, I'll click on. So this is what you get when you sign up. I have created a demo project year uh, when you sign up you will have to create a new project when you do that you basically see the screen uh, once you are on the screen the first thing i will do is i'll create a monitor now monitor is anything you would like to monitor it could be a website it could be an api it could be an ip address it could be anything really and one of time lets you monitor all of these in one dashboard and on one platform. So I click on, I click on create a monitor. Uh, I enter the monitor name. Let's say I want to monitor my uh, backend API. So I say API as the name says backend API. In the description, select the mon monitoring type as API. There are a whole bunch of monitoring types here. You can select any of these. Uh, they correspond to different resources uh, like you know that you want to monitor and we are adding more and more options um, every 15 days so every month or every couple of weeks a new monitoring type is being added here so by the time you watch this video uh, we would have loads more options as well uh, so I click on API click next and when I do that, it'll ask me for the API URL. I can type in a, a, a temporary URL if I like. I can say apiurl.com. Uh, this is not an active API URL, but you know, it'll give you, uh, you can enter your API URL that'll return XML or JSON or anything really. The API type, the type of the API, is it a get request? Is it a post request? Is it a delete request? Uh, you can type in, you can add in custom request headers. So if you have a bearer token, you can add a bearer token here. You can add in a request body. Uh, if you have a custom request body, you can you can add those here as well. If I scroll down, we give you two criterias by default. So give, we give you an offline criteria. And we also give you an online criteria uh, by default. Uh, we'll look into what like you know what these criterias are and how to customize them. So if you look at the offline criteria, uh, you can say if any of these conditions meet, if any of these below conditions meet, then the API is considered offline. Uh, when is online is false, which basically means if the API is completely down, we cannot reach it. Uh, and if response status code is not equal to 200. So if any one of these meet, the API is offline. And when these filters match, I want to change my monitor status to offline. We give you three statuses by default, operational, degraded, and offline. You can add more statuses in product settings. We've seen loads of customers add under maintenance. Um, we've, we've seen load, loads of customers rename offline to something else. All of that is very possible in project settings, so you could do that. Uh, but just, just to recap a bit, if any of these conditions meet, change the status to offline. And after you change the status, we need to create an incident. And the incident would be, this would be the title of the incident. This would be the description of the incident that is created. And I could type in anything I like here. In this would be the incident severity. Incident severity, you could also customize in project settings. So you could go to project settings, delete all of these severity, add P1, P2, P3 if you like, 
add more stage, remove stage, all of that is very possible. So it's very customizable according to your requirements. Uh, so once I select the incidents we are using, let's say select major or critical, uh, it'll ask me to select the on-call policy. We will do a video on on-call policy um, later down the line. It should already be uploaded to YouTube if you're looking for it uh, by the time you watch this video. But since we do not have an on-call policy defined in this project, it doesn't show anything. On-call policy lets you to to call any team member or send an SMS to a team member or send an email to a team member when things go down or when an incident is created. It'll also let you define escalation policies. So it'll say if if, if Alice doesn't pick up the call or if Bob doesn't pick up the call, um, escalate it to Charlie. Uh, so that is definitely possible in one of time as well. Uh, even on-call rotations is possible. So you can do shifts all of that stuff and all of this will be covered in, in the later video. Um, so when these conditions no longer meet, we want to auto resolve this incident. Uh, and exactly the same thing, we give you the online criteria just as we gave you the offline criteria by default. So if all of the conditions meet, if API is online, if response status is equal to 200, then the API is online and either you change the status to operational and by default, if none of these criteria meets, which is highly unlikely, um, the default status is, is operational. Um, so this is what we give you by default. Now you can customize these, these criteria and filters. You can add more criteria by, click, by clicking on the add criteria button. You can remove the criteria by clicking on delete criteria. You can add more criteria. You can add as, as many criteria as you like. Honestly, there's no limit to it. Uh, I'll quickly dive into what these filters do and you know the filters you have and the op optionality you have. So if I click on these filters, you can check on response headers. So you can say if this header exists, then the monitor is online. You can check on response header value. So you can say like, you know, if this header exists and if it's of this value, then the monitor is online. You can do resp response body. So you can say, my API returns a huge JSON. Uh, and if data.item.something equal to equal to equal to something, then the monitor is online. So you can do a whole bunch of things as well. You can also do JavaScript expressions. So if I click on JavaScript expressions, I could potentially say, if my response headers have this value, but my response body does not have this value, then the monitor is online. Or you could honestly define these criteria in any way you like. And if you do not have anything covered here, feel free to contact support. We're more than happy to help you out in any way possible. Um, and you can add, like I already said, you can add more criteria as well. So you could potentially, you could hypothetically say like, you know, if the response body has this particular value, then alert this team. If the response body has the other value, alert the other team. You could do a whole bunch of stuff here. To make this demo simple, what I would actually do is I will not create an API monitor. I will create a manual monitor and I'll show you how the incident process works, how the incident management process works and all of that stuff. So I'll click on create a monitor let's say i i say home page type in home page as a description just as an example i select manual from this list now manual monitor will not actually monitor anything for you it's a manual monitor it's a static monitor it'll not actually do anything for you but you can actually connect this monitor to other external monitoring services out there so that's also possible Manual monitor will make this demo a lot simpler because we can create incidents manually. I'll, I can show you how incident management works and a whole whole lot of that stuff. I'll click on, I click on create monitor. Monitor is created. By default, it is operational. If I click on view monitor, it'll say it's operational and it's 100% up. 
just like we expect. We haven't done anything to it so far. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly add this monitor to a status page to show you how that looks like as well. So you, if you've done a video on status page uh, as well, it's uploaded to YouTube and on the website. So if you go to the website, um, search for status page, you'll see a video on status page as well. Uh, but I can quickly show you how status pages work. And so I have a status page created. When I click on view status page, I go to this dashboard. It says localhost here uh, as this URL. It says this because I'm on a local test server or a demo server. You could customize this URL to anything you like. Uh, in if you are signing up to the website, it'll, just, it'll say oneuptime.com. You can customize this to status.yourcompany.com or anything really. So if I click on this link, this is what I see. It's a blank status page. It has nothing on it so far. Um, there's no logos to it. There's no fav icons to it. Nothing has uploaded to it so far. But if I go back and add a monitor to it, uh, click on home page. I can, I can add the home page monitor which we've already created to the status page. I can see home, home page. Uh, this is home page. Click on next. I can leave this blank honestly. Uh, I can say show up time person to two decimal places and create a status page resource. Home page is added to the status page. And if I show you how that looks like, uh, if I click on this link, this is how your status page looks like. So it's very simple. We have created a monitor. We have added a monitor to the status page. Now I'll show you how to create an incident on it and how the status page would react to it and how your teams would react to it as well. So if I click on this incident, I can create an incident. Now, since this is a manual monitor, I ha I will manually create an incident. But if you were monitoring an API or a website or anything really, uh, an incident would be automatically created for you. So I click on incident. I can say title um, home page incident description home page description now this is in markdown so you could add a whole bunch of things you could add images you could add you could add links you could have like you know add anything to it incident severity i could select anything you could customize these in project settings like i've already said uh hit next monitors affected as home page click on offline click next on call policies i haven't defined any so far in this project so it's blank but I could alert a team as well when this incident is created. Click on next, who owns this incident in my company? I can leave this blank, it's completely optional. Labels are for categorization. You could create a label in project settings with customer name, with team name, and you can add many labels to this incident. Uh, we haven't added anything so far, so it's, it's an empty list. If I click on create an incident, it'll show up as one active incident up top. It'll, if I click on view incident, and if I go to the root cause, it'll show me why exactly was this incident created. And you know, it was created by Alice, which is me at this time. Um, and it's, a, like it's, it's manually created by me. So if you are doing an API monitor or a website monitor or a ping monitor, port monitor, it'll exactly show you why this incident was created. It'll show, it'll say things like, your website returned 404 or your, your website returned 500 or your website was completely down. We were not able to reach it. So you could debug more into why things, like you know, why things go wrong. Um, but before I, I do this, I can quickly go to status page and hit refresh and show you how the incidents look like. So it says some resources are offline, home page is offline, this is red, and you can see the incident state change to identified 
Now you can also customize incident states in project settings. So you can add more states if you will. You can rename them. All of that is all of that is very very possible. So if I go back to my dashboard, I can acknowledge the incident. It says incident is acknowledged by Alice, which is me. And if I go to my status page, it should say acknowledged as well. And I could add notes to it. So if I want to update my internal team, I can add a private note to it. Private notes are in Markdown. You can also create them from template by clicking here. I do not have any templates at this time and this is why it doesn't show me anything. Uh, so this is all of this is in Markdown. You can add a whole bunch of documents to it, links to it, images to it, like you know, world is the limit. Um, public notes are the ones that are shown on the state on the status page uh, for your customers to see or for other stakeholders in your company to see. Um, I could add a public note. Uh, currently, invest investigating click on public note and you know if I go to my status page and hit refresh it should show up as well so this is in markdown as well so you could add, add a whole bunch of things and if I quickly go to my dashboard and resolve the incident the incident disappears from the status page and the status page should turn back green but if I click on the incident tab I can see the incident, the past incident that has occurred. And if I click on view incident, I can see the whole history of it. If I go to the dashboard, click on incidents, I see the incident is resolved. And if I click on home, I don't see any active incidents so far. So this is how incidents work in one of time. Um, uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to support. We're more than happy to help you in any way possible. There's lots more to it. Like you can, you have integrations, you have on-call policies, like, you know, there's loads more to incidents that you can do. This is, I'm just scratching the surface up here. Um, if you do have any integration questions, implementation questions, feel free to reach out to support. We're more than happy to help. Uh, hopefully this video answered some basics on how to monitor your resources and how incidents are created, who is alerted and when, how incidents are resolved, the whole incident life cycle and so forth. Uh, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your time.